Neural nets aren't the same as brains, just inspired by them, like how birds inspired planes or burrs inspired Velcro. A neuron in the human brain hears signals from thousands of other neurons, listens to each excitatory or inhibitory input, and synthesizes the great mass of information from all of them to yield a blip or no blip. Neural nets in machine learning are like that, just cleaner. After all, neurons in the human brain had to cobble together their structure over millennia of evolution, using neurotransmitters, ion channels, and precise voltage control to achieve basically what we can do with a plus sign on a computer. Because neural nets are experiencing so much attention right now, they're going through a bit of evolution of their own. New ways of constructing neural nets are coming out every day and bringing with them lots and lots of acronyms, with each new way of doing things trying to outperform the others on benchmark tasks. Despite all this variety, every neural net contains the same two common building blocks. There's a part that's linear, which is usually code for things work out nicely. Then there's a part that's nonlinear, which often means <laughs> good luck trying to prove anything. The linear part is that synthesis step. In a neural net, there are a bunch of nodes or neurons that are connected by edges with different weights. Each node adds up the input from all its neighbors, multiplied by the weight of the edges connecting them to get a number representing its state. The nonlinear part is the decision step. Based on the number from the linear step, the node decides blips, no blips. Here's a cool thing. For as scary and annoying as nonlinearities can be, the ones that seem to work best for neural nets are all pretty nice, which is kind of amazing. Neural nets have crushed the competition in tons of machine learning challenges, yet the basic rules for their nodes are simple and clean. It's the fact that they're combined into networks that give rise to the bogglingly good performance. What do these networks look like? There are input neurons that ingest inputs, like the third pixel from the right and five down in an image. There are output neurons that give outputs. There might be 10 of these if you're trying to classify the digits zero through nine, or a lot more if you're trying to identify the content of an image. There are typically many more neurons in between the inputs and outputs, organized into layers. They talk to their neighbors by alternating between simple linear steps and still pretty simple nonlinear steps. Before training, the outputs from the output layer will be nonsense. They won't match the data, the same way a song played on a randomly tuned piano won't sound anything like what it's supposed to. Training the network is like tuning that piano. Just like you tighten or loosen strings in a piano to make a song sound right, you increase or decrease the edge weights in a neural net to match its outputs to the data you're training on. By tuning the edge weights like this during training, the network is primed to handle the same kind of inputs during testing. There are a lot of flavors of neural net right now, and we don't really know which approaches are going to win in the long run. In fact, there's a lot we don't know about why neural nets work at all. But we're learning, and we know enough now to make informed choices about which tools to use for which problems. We're learning that convolutional layers are good for exploiting the spatial structure of images. We're learning that randomly tossing out parts of the data at each iteration can make the fit more robust. We're learning that one of the simplest of the simple nonlinear activation functions, ReLU, seems to work best in deep learning. If you're new to neural nets, how do you start forming insights like this of your own? You get your hands on some data and you start playing around. You can tackle the first part with the Wolfram Data Repository, where lots of different data sets are already available and pre-processed for your use. You can grab a data set and download it into your notebook with a line of code. As for playing around with it, the Wolfram Language's Neural Net Framework makes that straightforward as well. You can download a pre-built neural net from the Wolfram Neural Net Repository that's been trained to match the data. Then you can look at its guts. The Neural Net Repository gives you a lot of options. Audio, text, images, no problem. You can pick a net that's a good fit for your problem right off the shelf with NetModel and tune it to match your data. Or you can start from scratch. Create your own networks using NetChain, 
train them, and see how performance changes as you knock layers out or add them in. This kind of self-guided exploration can help you go from being familiar with the idea of a neural network to developing an intuition for them. And you can get up and running on all sorts of data types in minutes by tapping into the curated data sets the Wolfram language provides. But this is a lot more than a sandbox. The real power of the framework is how rapidly you can put its tools to work on your own data sets and how easily you can share your work with others. With only a few lines of code, you can begin tackling problems of your own with the tools in the Wolfram language. Get started today with Wolfram 1 or Wolfram Mathematica.